Dr. Michelle Kessler. I need to talk to you about a patient the government would like you to see. This patient is immensely dangerous, so we need the best. Link. The court has mandated that you attend these sessions, and it's my responsibility to determine whether or not you feel remorse and whether or not you are a danger to the public. Do you understand the terms of your treatment? Okay, why don't you walk me through... Doc, I know this is about the fight, but to understand why it happened, there's some backstory that might make it make sense. Go on. My boyfriend Keith died a few years back. It fucked me up. I know grief's hard. This ain't the first time I lost someone, but it didn't stop. It felt like I was sedated. I couldn't snap out of it. Hmm. And how long did this last? Three years. Did you at any point seek treatment or medication? I hate to admit it now, but that's just not how I was raised. I drank. Made it easier, or well, seemed to. So the night of the fight, I hit up a support group for wolves after work. It helps. And then I went to the bar and got a scotch, a seven. Mm. These douchebags at the other table start talking amongst themselves about werewolves, about how we animals who should be taken out back and shot. First time since Keith died, I felt anything. At the time, it felt good. It was stupid. Who threw the first punch? I don't remember. Honestly, I regret what I did. Trying to move on best I can. Wow. Oh. You against four men. And yet they walked out with um, one broken leg, three cracked ribs, two broken arms. And that gentleman was particularly lucky. Plus one other man who had extensive plastic surgery because you smashed his face in with a glass. As I said, I feel awful. Huh. Do you recognize these sketches? No. No? They're from an old assault case, filed by one Keith Orbach in Chicago. I think they bear a stunning resemblance to the men that you assaulted. Hmm. Kel Tully's not interested in bearing evidence in red tape, so it was very easy for me to find this. Now, are you still gonna claim that this was a crime of passion, Link? You did your homework. Well, yeah, that's a big part of my job. I can respect that. So, if you're making a big deal about Tully, I'm betting you're making some assumptions about my extracurricular activities. Well, he has made quite a name for himself. And you are not exactly a first-time offender. Vandalism, assault... I bet you don't ask who throws the first punch when a cop's involved. Link, you have a history of violence and civil disobedience. And it doesn't look good when you have a man like Tully on your team. I'm an activist, not a terrorist. Okay, but you are terrorist adjacent. And that's what concerns me. I thought this was therapy, not an interrogation. It is my job to determine whether or not you are a danger to the public. Now that depression story, that was very convincing. Keith was in a coma for six weeks after what they did. I wanted them to pay to get that squared away before before what? I just mean I hurt some guys. 
who hurt someone else. Karmically, the scales are balanced here. You nearly killed those men, Mr. Lincoln. Laws exist for a reason. Why should I follow the rules when the game is broken? Because let's face it, the game is broken. We're the primary victims of police brutality because humans are scared shitless of us. Legislators think we inherently dangerous, so there are no laws protecting us from employment discrimination, housing discrimination, the works. This system killing my people, so don't you tell me to follow the goddamn rules. You don't have the fucking right. And that's why I'm not gonna talk to some human bitch like you.